the great prophet Isaiah speaking mathematically brilliantly, beginning in Isaiah chapter 53. Who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? This is uh, one of the most epic introductions in the entire Bible, as many are familiar with it, because this is um, an exceedingly glorious passage that just uh, declares the Messiah to the nth degree in the entire chapter. And so this introduction we would expect to be very mathematically glorious. So let's look at it quickly. And um, yeah, this is Jesus. This um, this gets quoted in the New Testament right here, um, where the saying of the prophet is fulfilled, um, which he spake, saying, Lord, who hath believed a report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? So this is a prophecy of the prophet Isaiah that is fulfilled in the life of Jesus. So let's analyze this prophecy mathematically and see how it glorifies Jesus. Always to the roots to th see the glory. Um, the exact roots in this prophecy are as follows. Um, these are all the roots in what he spoke. They divide by eight in total perfectly, doubly so, even though none of the individual roots divide by eight except for Jehovah, the Lord, God Almighty double eight. See that? See how God makes strings of roots. He's the king of intelligence, so he combines not just pairs, but also triples and quadruples and higher strings of roots in in uh, to glorify Jesus equals eight. eight. And um, oh, see the fact that, look at, look at how these are an obvious pair. Okay, look, and God does this frequently, how the last word um, of 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 set of clauses will pair with the second you know last word in the pair of clauses. So, who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? These are two clauses that are parallel, and the final words are a dramatic pair. Okay, let's look at the final words as the pair. Here we go. The root of report and the root of revealed are a totally ordained pair because they make a three-digit all-factor eight number that divides by eight twice to the glory of Jesus. Wow. And, um, oh my goodness, this just keeps getting... Uh, the final word in the whole verse in the Hebrew text is 488, which is three-digit all-factor eight number. And you get the idea. God is infinitely creative and is glorifying this number, 888, in the most mind-blowing ways. The next verse just keeps getting... So now it starts describing the Messiah. And l let me just say <laughs> that in studying this passage mathematically, it is so drippingly loaded with 8, it's not even funny. The first two roots, first of all, are triple eight times 10. The first two roots that describe the Messiah... <laughs> He shall grow up before him, as in, he will grow up before the eyes of God Almighty. 240 is triple eight, to the glory of Jesus equals eight at eight. He shall grow up before him as what? As a tender plant. So this is the first word that's used to describe the Messiah. Well, by divine ordinance, it is 160, which is 16 times 10. Anything that's multiplied by 10 increases the glory on what is multiplied and anything that is doubled is the same thing. So all uttermost glory is on Mr. 8 in this number 160. Absolutely. So this is the first word to describe the Messiah. Exceedingly. He's going to be Mr. 8. That's what this is saying. Get ready for Mr. 8 man to come onto the scene. He will be so loaded with 8 it's not even funny. And of course Oh, just keep watching all these videos and you'll you'll get the idea. Lord, King, Savior, Christ, the five major titles of Christ in Greek are so drippingly loaded with eight, it's not even funny. Um, so yeah, now all three of those roots combined yield 400 perfectly, which divides by eight brilliantly. And, um, and look at this, of course. The first thing the Messiah is compared to is 160, a tender plant. Well, who is Jesus? He is Jehovah. Jehovah is 16 in its three glyph root, this, this first word to describe the Messiah is 160. Tender plant, 16. Remember, times 10 for utmost emphasis. There you have it. The Messiah, 
the Messiah is Jehovah himself. <laughs> there you have it. Look at Jehovah the Lord. God, Jesus, is Jehovah, is salvation. The Messiah is Jehovah. Jesus, God in the flesh, God incarnate, folks. That's just simply the thing you have to accept. It's not complicated. You just have to accept that, that God himself came down to earth. It's not complicated. Um, and the next thing is the root itself. Oh, the word root is 800. Um, so look at this. He, so God says... The Messiah shall grow up before him as a tender plant, equals 160, and as a root out of dry ground. Why does why is the prophet led to choose these words tender plant, tender plant and this word root? Well, it's because they're mathematically loaded. To the glory of Jesus equals 8 at 8. He shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. So look at the first two titles of the prophesied Messiah, hand in hand, are tender plant and root, which couldn't divide any more by eight if they tried, and the result is this exceedingly glorious number, which divides by eight doubly, then 15, which is the 7n plus 1 number right after eight. All of these are 7n plus 1 numbers in the God number series, so it's, it's overwhelming. Um, and then, after that, we are told three things. A perfect set of three things that will not be the um, will not be his attraction for us: form, comeliness, or beauty. It says he has no form or comeliness or beauty that we should desire him. What this says is that it is not the physical appearance of the Messiah that will um, be his prime attraction for us. So, but again, this is for the mathematical, ultimately for the mathematical glory of Jesus. Look at this trio. One, two, three. Three roots of three glyphs apiece that make this gorgeous multiple of eight. None of them divide by eight individually, but the ordained trio of them do. And that's all 7n plus 1. All of these are also 7n plus 1 numbers. God number series, 7n plus 1. Eight. 127, 1016. These are all 7n plus 1. This is a totally divine trio of roots from the mind of God that literally summarize all beauty. All beauty on planet Earth. Um, for example, if we just do a, my goodness, just do an image search on the words beautiful face and you start to marvel at just how much beauty God has endowed all of his children with and in every way possible. Beautiful face, whatever, all beauty on planet Earth, you could say is adequately summarized in this perfect trio of three Hebrew roots. Form, comeliness, beauty. The words in English are not adequate to fully describe what these roots actually say, but they are a perfect trio in the mind of God that summarizes basically all outward appearance. And look at how um, even even they are linked together, like a triple braided cord. You know, look how the last letter of this one equals the first letter of this one and equals the last letter of this one. Look how the center letter of this one equals the center letter of this one. Look how the last letter of this one equals the first letter of this one. Look how this one is 400 and this one is 4. Do you see how the Bible is knit together like a triple braided cord that ultimately glorifies Jesus equals 888? Absolutely, my beloved children. Look at, read the verse for yourself. So here is how it reads. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. <laughs> that This is the description of the Messiah, folks. And this is mathematical prophecy. That's what you have to understand, is that the prophets, filled with the Holy Spirit, directed by uh, the Spirit of God, wrote mathematical prophecy. Wrote the divine mind of God to mathematically glorify the ultimate Messiah and King of the universe, Jesus equals 8 at 8, the culmination of all of this. Okay. Um, wow. I'm just revisiting that verse here quickly and um, oh my there's just there's so much in it it's not even funny I'm just gonna keep going with what we've got in the document 
Um, next verse. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Um, look at, he is despised and rejected of men. Why does it say two words? Why doesn't it just say he is despised by men or he was rejected by man? Why does it say two words like that? Because they're a divine pair. Here we go. Look at the divine pair. He is despised and rejected. So do the math on the pair of roots for despised and rejected. And you get 56 equals 8 times 7. 7 is the number of a set of like things. Therefore, all glory is upon this number, Mr. 8, right here. 7 simply enhances the glory of Mr. 8 because it's a set of 7 of them. 8. He is despised and rejected. Are you now seeing how even the existence of suffering and the, the existence of someone being despised and someone being rejected is ultimately for the glory of Jesus, who was able to show the insane level of his love for us by means of enduring the highest forms of being despised and the highest forms of being rejected, total rejection from people who should have loved him, totally being despised by people he had done nothing but good towards, and and that is to show the extreme, insane level of love that he has towards us as the worthy king to be king over all for all of eternity. His love is so high, it is so all-surpassing of all hatred of, of men that if you have experienced any ounce of being despised in your life, if you have experienced a huge amount of rejection in your life know that Jesus has experienced both to the experienced both to the highest levels imaginable imaginable and so this divine pair is for his mathematical glory if you just keep your eyes on Jesus in whatever it is that you've ever gone through you will get the you will get the mercy and the love and the grace and the understanding and the peace no matter what you have gone through and no matter what people have done to you Jesus went through worse and he is your ultimate counselor hallelujah so he is despised and rejected of men Whew. this is exceedingly glorifying the Messiah look both of these words as well are all factor eight numbers as well we see that we see God doing that constantly many times in a, in a divinely orchestrated pair of roots, um, the individual roots will be all factor eight numbers by themselves, and then the results will be a multiple of eight. We just did an example in the previous gem on prayer and supplication, um, both all factor eight numbers, and then the result is exceedingly glorious. So to be despised or rejected, this is a... Um, divine pair here and I'm just going to state how the Bible is once again knit together um, look at look at how these words are knit together I'm going to do this right here this letter and this letter make 32 which is a multiple of 8 so the first letter here and the last letter here so if these were written side by side this would these would be the bookends this first letter here and this last letter here. The bookends of this pair make a multiple of eight. And then the middles then of these words. This makes 12 right here. This is exactly 12 right here. And this is also 12 right here. Do you see that? How this is, um, if I could pull out a different highlighting color, which I think I can. Yes, there we go. So look at that. Look at how these this pair of roots is um, designed by God to be together. In yellow here is the value 12. In yellow here is the value 12 using two totally different letters but they have the same number. And then the bookends, the final two letters, make 32 which is a multiple of 8. The bookends the whole thing and so at the center is 12 plus 12 is 24 or triple 8. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Because these are meant to be in this order, just like the prophet writes them. 
The fact that the prophet wrote them in the order he did is also significant. So look, Isaiah did not say he is rejected and despised by men. He said he is despised and rejected by men. Rejected is even higher, is even higher than despising. Its value is greater and um, it finishes stronger. And even the way that these words are spoken um, phonetically in Hebrew, your voice rises, your voice rises to the end of this first word, leaving an open with an ah sound at the end. So this root is like ba za. Baza, your voice rises, baza, and then in this one your voice can fall to the end. Chadal, baza, chadal. Do you see how even phonetically they're meant to be spoken in the order that they occur? So here's the order that they would occur as the prophet spoke them and wrote them. Baza, chadal. Baza Chadal. The Messiah is dis, would be despised and rejected. Your voice, by God's design, likes to rise to the middle of a sentence and likes to fall for the conclusion. We do this all the time, by nature. It's God's design. Despised and rejected. Baza Chadal. And look, so this, these two letters make 12. These two letters make 12. Therefore, all that you see in gold here, in yellow, is perfectly 24. Perfectly 24 at dead center. So at s dead center is 8 plus 8 plus 8, triple 8. And then the two letters on the outside, the supporting the bookends, as it were, make 32 make 32, which is another um, eights like this, if we can write it like this. There you have it. To be despised and rejected. This is the mathematical prophecy of Jesus, the Messiah. That he would be despised and rejected. Wow. And uh, the phrase itself, this keeps getting more overwhelming, folks. This is going to blow your mind, this next one. Are you ready for this? This is how it appears in Hebrew text, in exactly eight letters. Look at this. Look at what this says. He is despised and rejected. This is exactly the eight letters in the Hebrew text. They add exactly to 112, which is 56 doubled. Are you kidding me? This is so perfect. It's not even funny. I literally feel like weeping in my eyes right now, knowing how perfect this is, but knowing what this actually means, that Jesus was despised and rejected. Despised and rejected equals a double of 56 in text. That's 8 times 7, as we saw up here for the roots, to be despised and be rejected. Mm. 8 times 7 doubled. And do you see how that's accomplished? Do you see how that's accomplished? It's accomplished by inserting the AND right here. And it's accomplished by adding this 50 onto the front. So that, look at, and even that is parallel. The insertion of those two letters is at the front of both roots. Perfectly perfectly at the front of both roots that we looked at right here. Baza Chadal. Despised. Baza Chadal. But now in the text it says he is despised and rejected. It adds 56. So the roots themselves were 56. And now we add the letters 56 to say, to complete the phrase in the text that says he is despised and rejected. And that brings the total of letters perfectly to 8. So that's perfectly 8 letters. 4 here and then 4 here. And these two inserted letters are 56 and then the pair of roots themselves are 56. So we have a double of 56. He is despised. And this just keeps getting higher. And so now the first word is he is despised. 
that adds, this is it right here, that adds perfectly to 64. That's 8 times 8. And so then the second word, and, rejected, equals 48, exactly. He is despised and rejected. And so the grand total is, of course, what we saw above. This gets even further. He is, and by whom was he despised and rejected? He was despised and rejected by men. And this is the next word that appears in Hebrew. Men, plural. And this equals a double of the eighth prime. 361 is 19 times 19, which is the eighth prime times the eighth prime, for utmost emphasis on Mr. Eight. He himself is a man. This, this, this Messiah, this prophesied Messiah, is a man, we are told. He is a man which equals the 64th prime. This describes, this also takes the glory for all of mankind. Do you see how this is the root here? Of men, plural. Do you see the genius of God? Here is the word for man, as in a single man. The Messiah was a single man. He is Jesus, single man, which equals the 64th prime. 311 is the 64th prime. That equals 8 times 8. But look at the plural for men, as in any number of men, a million men. So here's one man equals 8 times 8 by the law of prime. Now here's a million men equals 8 times 8 by the law of prime. It, this summarizes all mankind in all the world for the glory of Jesus equals 8 at 8. Let's keep going. This is, this is the sacred words of God describing um, the prophecy of his son in Isaiah. Specifically, he is a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. That literally means knowing grief. Knowing grief. It's stronger than acquainting. It's, it's stronger than him just being acquainted with grief. It says he knows <laughs> what grief is and what it feels like. He is a man. First of all, Jesus, the Messiah, is a man, 8 times 8, of sorrows and knowing grief. Look at how none of these numbers, you know, um, but now the combination, com com the combination of them is, watch this, is 461, which is the one and only 89th prime. 89 is then the one and only 24th prime, which is 8 times 3, which is triple 8. Jesus is the prophesied man of sorrows who knows what grief is. He knows what grief feels like. He isn't just acquainted with grief. He knows. He is the man of sorrows who knows what grief feels like. And that divine total is exactly triple eight to the glory of of the king of numbers, Jesus equals 8 at 8. And this is to the glory of Jesus. This is all to the glory of Jesus equals 8 at 8. The final words of that clause in text now, in the literal Hebrew text, grief, grief. This is the final word, the last word. Jesus equals 8 at 8 almost always takes the glory for the last word. This equals 48 perfectly, which is 8 times 6. Whenever you see 6, think to yourself a pair of 3s. So this is literally a pair of triple eights. this number 48. That's how you're to see it. Grief, that's the last word. And then the second last word <laughs> also divides by 8 to really cement that fact. And then together, <laughs> those last two words are 8 letters, exactly eight letters, the last words about this man, the Messiah. And those total perfectly. They both individually divide by eight. They total perfectly 144, which is the perfect square of 12, and divides by eight, 12, and 24 perfectly to the glory of Jesus. And the statement of all this is that Jesus knew grief. Um, and this is one of the most epic images and statements um, that I've seen um, portraying Jesus as the savior of the world um, on t-shirts and and in various places. Man, 
the the weight of what he bore is so huge we cannot even begin to fathom how heavy and grievous that much spiritual pressure and you know demonic attack on your soul day and night to try and stop you from doing what you're going to do for the glory of God it's it's unthinkable it's literally unthinkable the amount of pressure and the amount of attack that Jesus had from Satan and all of his demons at all times in the most in the highest levels of attack in in the abuse of men from the highest degree possible it is unfathomable how much grief Jesus actually endured and um so the first word of the next sentence like it just keeps going so now we're on to the first word of the next sentence so the first word first of all divides by eight and you just are overwhelmed at this point at how screamingly eight loaded this entire um, this entire prophecy is we were hiding our faces this is eight letters now again eight letters in Hebrew that equal 880 what does this say what does this say that is so mathematically glorious about the Messiah? It says we were hiding our faces. It's literally, most prophecy literally declares things in the present tense because they are going to happen. <laughs> As in, in the mind of God, they are already in, brought into existence. And it says we would hide our faces from him because of the sheer amount of grief and suffering that he would endure and you don't have to stare long at pictures like that um, to <laughs> know that you absolutely would human nature wants to turn your face away from that kind of suffering before your eyes and um, it just keeps going like just so dripping with eight every word every phrase every clause the final letters, the, the first letters, the, the, the final three letters, the final two letters, down, down to the, the very end, everything is just multiplying by eight. You know, entire statements, we were hiding our faces from him, divided by eight perfectly in the most gorgeous exact numbers of letters that glorify Jesus equals eight at eight. All of these numbers are seven n plus one. The action of people hiding their faces from the Messiah. The very next word, he was despised again there's that word again he was despised that is 64 equals 8 times 8 so twice this has been used now that he was despised 8 times 8 and um, so all together now hiding our faces from him he was despised that's exactly 16 letters of total four four words of four letters apiece and that totals is perfectly 1080 in 16 letters divided by 8 insanely gorgeously um just it just keeps going it's it's so drippingly loaded and we esteemed him not 408 divides by 8 perfectly and the final word in that breaks down gloriously it's it's so loaded it's so loaded the final clause which is eight letters that says we did not esteem him have you ever been held in low esteem by someone? Has, has someone ever spit on you, as it were, or just looked down upon you or thought less of you than you knew you actually were? Jesus was esteemed extremely terribly by, by everyone who was around him. And that is, um, that number is an all-factor eight number, three-digit all-factor eight number that breaks down by the law of prime to a double of triple eight. And that is accomplished in exactly eight letters. That's how screaming out this individual clause is with the number eight. And folks, consider how difficult this is to write stuff like this that glorifies the number eight so much. It's overwhelming. Um, repeated twice, triple eight repeated twice for utmost emphasis. In eight letters, we have a triple eight repeated twice saying that the Messiah would be someone who was rejected by men and completely unesteemed given who he actually is and um, you want to see a big one now I mean it's it's all here's an entire string an entire string that adds perfectly to 1488 
<clears throat> and um, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Two things he did for us now. He bore our griefs and he carried our sorrows. Both are exactly 11 letters apiece, balanced perfectly, and they make a gorgeous multiple of 8 together in 22 letters, which is precisely the number of letters in the Hebrew alphabet. And so God continues to glorify the Messiah mathematically with his number 8 all through this. Um, he was stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. That whole statement divides by 8 brilliantly. Three things happened to him. He was stricken, he was smitten, he was afflicted. That boils down to 8th prime times 7th prime. 7 is the number of a seven, set of like things, so that is for all shining stardom on Mr. 8. Three things that Jesus endured. Three roots of three glyph eats that, that ultimately glorify the number 8. He was stricken, he was smitten, he was afflicted. Um, and then the famous sentence, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was um, bruised for our iniquities. The um, chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. The first statement is, he was wounded. He was wounded. That's the first statement of that declares that the Messiah um, was physically marred. Um, that makes three digital factor eight number that divides by eight perfectly. It's the glory of Jesus equals eight. It says he was wounded. Jesus was wounded. Goes on. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. You combine the roots all the way through the truths of the Word of God and see the glorious multiples of eight all the way through. All of these numbers are seven n plus one, eight seventy eight six twenty four. All all of those are seven n plus one. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. That word bruised is actually means crushed. And these are parallel statements. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And so all four of these things combine together to make this stunning number here. Um, the pairs themselves have glory in them. Once you have the law of prime, Jesus equals 8 at 8, divides by 37 perfectly. And this yields a double of the 16th prime. 16 is double 8. And um, and ultimately the chastisement for our peace was upon him. Chastisement for peace equals 8 times 80 exactly. Chastisement for peace. That is the trade-off. That is what Jesus you know, endured so that you could receive. He endured this so that you could receive this. Peace with God, that is this, this word literally is, describes more than peace. It describes total wholeness. It describes total health, total wellness, total healing. Total wholeness is the best word that can describe it. Jesus was chastised, received chastisement in, for your peace, for your wholeness. For your wholeness before God Almighty. This is a divine pair that is for the glory of Jesus equals 8 at 8. This number 640 is the same number as the sun in the sky that keeps us all alive. 8 times 80 to the glory of Jesus equals 8 at 8. This is a de facto divine pair in the mind of God for the glory of Jesus. You can even see details in the letters of how these combine together. Yeah, the final, both of the final letters in these divide by 8 by themselves. And together they are 240. And um, and then obviously the beginning letters work together to make a multiple of eight as well. Wow. And, oh yeah, so both of these words are perfectly balanced around 320. See that? This makes 270. This makes 370. They're d dramatically parallel. Three-digit numbers this, that differ exactly by 100 and, and perfectly make eight times 80. Chastisement for peace. There's only one person in the entire universe that endured chastisement to bring peace. And that is Jesus Christ. And this is pointing to him mathematically in the most overwhelming level. Let's keep going. And watch this. And look at how the chast... So they're both perfectly balanced around 320, these two numbers. 270 is, is 50 less. 370 is 50 more. And um, the chastisement is obviously the one that is less. The peace is higher. 
You just the more you see, the more you look, the more you see. It's that simple. The more you stare at the infinite word of God, the more you see it just explode with glory down to the letter in mathematical um, brilliance and it all gets done for us. This is if this this is overwhelming you and it should. Um, the word itself, peace, wholeness, obviously divides by eight, shalom, most common word in all of Jerusalem and Israel, shalom. Um, and furthermore, when you say our peace, our wholeness, which is as we read the prophets saying, it adds a multiple of eight onto the end of that, 56. So it continues to divide by eight. And so this, the whole declaration is that he did it for us. The ending on all of those statements, those three statements, are for us. This, this 56 says he did it for all of us in every one of those things. He was wounded for our transgressions, our, iniqui our iniquities, and the chastisement for our peace was upon him. Three times. Our, our, our. All of us, all of us, all of us. All who will receive, all who will receive, all who will receive. 56, 56, 56. And one more, our healing. <laughs> Look at them all. This, so you can see how you notice all this in the Holy Word of God. One, two, three, four. And how are we healed? By his stripes. By his stripes we are healed. This is the tool. You don't need to meditate on that for very long. Um, his stripes. His stripes. This is the word his stripes. How are you healed? By his stripes. That's the mathematical, that's it right there. That's how you're healed. You're staring at the Hebrew words that describe how you are healed. The answer is his stripes. That's a perfect seven set of 88s to the glory of Jesus equals 888. And it even begins with the letter 8. Just to really emphasize that it's to the glory of Jesus equals 888 by which your healing is purchased. And we health, oh my goodness, to be healed, the root is an exceedingly glorious number. To the glory of Jesus equals 888. Three digit all factor 8 number with 80 at its center. 7n plus 1 number. Um, it keeps going, friends. This this is the longest document I've put in one gem because it uh, is the most loaded prophecy of the Messiah of all time. Uh, we are all like sheep gone astray. Sheep having gone astray. Lo and behold, yields another string of 88s. And, um, and again, we are all like sheep gone astray. The word all is 80 by itself, so you can throw that in there. Um, and the final word in text is that we have gone astray, which ultimately boils down to 8 times the 8th prime. And we've all gone after our own way, which boils down to the 8, eight times the 8th prime tripled. And the final word, which is way, <laughs> or we just go our own way, is in all factor 8 number, it divides by 8. So are you seeing how it's just 8s everywhere? 8s <laughs> everywhere, and um, you can keep going. All of mankind, we solved everyone. This, this word all refers to everyone. So everyone on earth is summarized in this number eight, essentially. Again, we prove that all of mankind is summarized in the number eight, essentially. Um, in the final phrase, the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all, word by word. <laughs> word by word. So many words just divide by eight. <laughs> the first, second, and third words in that statement all divide by eight. Who is the iniquity laid upon? On him. That equals eight exactly. The Lord hath laid on him. 888. Eight, eight. The Lord hath laid on him. 888. Eight, eight. The iniquity of us all. And these are the final two words. The iniquity of us all. 232 equals 8 times 29. That's the equivalent to the most glorious words in the universe saying, Let there be light. This is so glorious. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. That grand total is exactly. 440, which is a three-digit all-factor eight number that divides by eight perfectly. Um, and um, look at this in summary of the two phrases, laid on him, the iniquity of us all. These are perfectly parallel in the Word of God. Together they make this three-digit all-factor eight number that divides by eight perfectly. Um, 
and of course the whole thing always finishes with all of us this ending 56 which is a perfect sevenfold set of eights and verse by verse this chapter 53 in Isaiah um, of the prophecy of the Messiah is so exceedingly exceedingly loaded mathematically um, that um, it, it's overwhelming it's totally overwhelming it's totally overwhelming to the nth degree um, I'll just jump to the end here to get a few final ones for you <laughs> down to the final words of all it's it's overwhelming um, but um, yeah so basically in this entire gem which I will post on the website um, is the entire chapter of Isaiah 53 which I encourage you to read for yourself word by word to read the entire prophecy of the Messiah and just know that it is absolutely mathemat mathematically proven that Jesus equals 8 at 8 is that Messiah. Hallelujah and glory to his name.